Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhaira Bagga and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting chess games that I played a few months back. I started off this one with e4, which is rare. I generally play the d4 opening, uh, but I went with e4 here, open plays d5, and I capture the free pawn as always. Opponent takes back with the queen, and now a knight to f3. Generally, you can place a knight to uh, c3, which is developing the knight and attacking the queen as well. But generally, in that case, you will see queen swinging over to a5 and trying to maintain this pin after d3 is placed. So I thought I'll just do something different here. I placed knight onto f3 first. Opponent develops the bishop onto g4, pinning my knight because otherwise I lose my queen. So that's a pin. I tried to remove it immediately by placing the bishop onto e2. And I'm ready to castle as well. Opponent places c6. And here I went with knight to c6, hitting the queen finally. Queen goes back. And if you see, after move number 5, I have a few pieces developed, whereas my opponent's only piece developed is the bishop. So I am in the advantage. That's why plus 0.8 here in the evaluation bar. And after that, I went with a d4, trying to break open, uh, take control of the center as well, and would let me develop the bishop as well. So it's a good it's a good uh, move there uh, to begin with. And open plays e6, uh, trying to make sure that the opponent can also develop the dark square bishop, maybe pin my knight again. Uh, but here I went with knight to uh, e5, hitting the bishop and making sure that the bishop has to be traded here. Or as the opponent has the only move, maybe can try and save the bishop going here, but then it's bad because you allow pawn forward. Uh, on to b4 and then once you move the bishop can still be captured but you have already allowed opponent to create more pressure onto you so don't make such moves where you are allow the opponent to come back further instead you can trade off the bishops in such cases that's what my opponent does i take back with the queen my center pawn uh, which is d4 was hanging here so opponent does take now i have a couple move of moves i can uh, castle, uh, which is the best move, I would say. Uh, or I can just simply get back my knight, which really is like kind of passive, which hits the queen though. So it can be effective too. And then you can develop your bishop uh, onto f4 and then play on from there. So I thought I'll just place bishop to d2, uh, which is again allowing me to castle queen side as well, which is another idea. Uh, because you want to place your rook in the center when the king is in the center, if I cast on the uh, on the king side, it will take me another move uh, to get my rook centralized as well. But if I cast on the queen side, my rook gets centralized immediately. So I thought bishop to uh, d2 is better. Uh, placing bishop onto e3 would have been bad because my knight would have gone there. So and and I cannot place my bishop onto f4 as-well because again a queen can take it and going to g5 again is a mistake because pawn forward traps my bishop so the only place I can keep my bishop was d2 if I have to move the bishop otherwise I could have gone with a knight f3 uh, or castling on the king side so instead I went with bishop d2 opponent develops the knight onto d7 I take off the knight opponent takes back and here comes castling finally trying to centralize my rook uh, bishop uh, is going to give a discovered attack on the queen and that is always going to be nice open saw that coming places queen to c7 i played uh, g3 here with the idea of placing my dark square bishop onto f4 then uh, open places knight to f6 and i thought of exchanging the knight as well offered the knight exchange which opponent denies and now bishop to c3 now, bishop to c3 is a nice idea. I want to, of course, trade off as well. Uh, plus, I take control of the b2 square as well. Also opens up the uh, d file for the rook. So it's a pretty nice move, which solves a lot of uh, problems in your system. Open does take here. I take back with the queen and open castles. And here comes uh, queen g4. Uh, now I'm threatening checkmate on to g7 with bishop and queen lining up opponent places g6 the most natural move there and i went with queen d4 again threatening checkmate uh, from couple of squares 
operant place is f6 now. So the whole point is I, I made my operant place uh, g6 and f6, uh, which has now weakened up the king side pawns uh, for sure. For example, e6 is not defended now. And once queen moves, the bishop is not also not defended. Uh, and once you can, if you are able to take the bishop or displace it from there, suddenly f6 is only guarded with the rook. So a lot of weaknesses have been created there. And that's what I try to utilize in the next move. A queen to e3, hitting the pawn again, which is not defended. Open had to play pawn forward to e5. And here comes f4, trying to break open further. Uh, so that's how you can take advantage, trying to uh, pursue your um, attack towards the opponent. Open places bishop to d6, trying to line up this uh, bishop and queen together. Uh, here I placed f5 now. Don't want to exchange because if I exchange here, uh, suddenly the opponent can open up the file as well, the f file for the attack. Uh, and my bishop is blocked, is of not much use then. And then my queen is kind of passive here. I need to maneuver it, uh, or I can uh, the attack can be continued only by placing h4 and then h5. Uh, and then of, of course, opponent will have some counterplay too. Can swing over the queen, and I'm not doing much there. So I thought instead I will not take here, uh, but I will just proceed with the pawn. So that if not, if my opponent now takes. Uh, that uh, opens up the king as well. Uh, open decides not to take, but places rook onto a, a d8 so that once the bishop is removed, we can exchange the rooks as well. I take on the pawn here, open takes back, and now I get, go for h4. Open places queen to f7. Now queen f7 does a couple of things, defends the pawn, hits my pawn on a2 as well. So comes king b1, trying to defend the pawn. Open goes back with the bishop, Nice defensive move, trying to acquire the control of h6. Also uh, willing to exchange rooks. So I just sidestep. Uh, I don't want to exchange because I think that I'm winning. I'm ahead in the game already. Why to trade off? And now with rook to f1 gives me a good option. The next move is going to be uh, bishop takes on e5. Open cannot take because of the pin. So that was the plan here. So open saw it coming and places queen to g7. And here I push further with g4 uh, with the ideas of pushing uh, to h5 next. Open places uh, b6, which was kind of weird, doesn't do anything, uh, but only prepares to get the bishop onto uh, c5, trying to m move my queen out of uh, from the diagonal. I place g5 here, trying to pursue with my pawn attack. Open places bishop now to e7 because wants to defend the situation on uh, to f6 as well. I went with h5 now, trying to break open. Open does take finally. And here comes the move. Pawn takes on to f6, which is kind of good folk. Open can take, of course, but then comes a rook, g2, a rook h to g1, pinning the queen. Open can take, but denies. Uh, so I took on the bishop first, not the queen. I can take the queen later on as well. Queen is not going anywhere. And open cannot take. My, I, the open can take, but then I have queen backwards coming. And then it will be checkmate pretty much early uh, in the next couple of moves. So that was completely winning from there if open does take. So that's why I took on the bishop first. And then open tries to exchange the rooks, which saves the queen temporarily. Uh, and I take back, opponent takes back here, and here comes bishop on to e5. Uh, bishop takes the e5 pawn, and now queen is under attack. Queen has to move. Once the queen moves, here comes another check from g1, and another check from b3. Just don't leave checks in the end so that there's no stalemate opportunity, and you can continue giving checks and win it from e there. Now rook comes to g8, opponent tries to run away, but doesn't help. And here comes queen, open can come in between, and here is the checkmate eventually. Checkmate in one, and yes, that was completely winning. So I hope you liked the video. Uh, do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And I shall see you tomorrow with some instructive and interesting content. And not to, not to forget this, 
has a beautiful graph. I was almost throughout the game in control of it. And eventually that bishop, the folk that came with the pawn was nice. And then it was constantly in my favor. So uh, average sentry pawn loss of 18, which is always kind of nice. Anything less than 20 feels good that you played the most precise moves possible. Yes, there was one mistake, one blunder, one inaccuracy. But yeah, that's as per the computer engine. Uh, so not the precisest of moves, but, but yeah, it was good enough to win that on that day. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.